Hi, I'm Laurent Lycia of Night Owl Stories, and tonight I'm going to narrate another short story in my new Tales of the Shtetl collection. This one is called, Is My Rugelach the Best? And it pits Menachem the baker against the best Jewish bakers in Belarus in a Rugelach bake-off. So, lie back, relax, and enjoy as I take you on a journey into the past. Menachem the baker handed Teva, the postmaster, the small white envelope with a deep sigh. One of Teva's bushy eyebrows rose. What's in the letter? Menachem's response was haughty. Hmm, that's private. Teva reached for his stack of stamps. Of course it is, but it looks like you want to talk about it. Menachem peered at his friend. If I tell you, the whole shtetl will know. Don't you want them to know? Don't be ridiculous, Teva. The comeback was not mordant and Teva heard it correctly as an invitation to pry further. Let me get us some tea, fresh from the samovar. I brought some pastries to go with it, Menachem revealed, confirming Teva's hunch. The stamp and the letter remained separate as they sat down to kibitz. The baker on Mielnikaita just passed, and the community is looking for a new one, Menachem went on, pointing with his chin at the letter. I'm applying. Everyone knew that Mielnikaita Street was one of the shopping venues in the Jewish quarter of Minsk. Teva nodded. That would certainly be a step up for you. Menachem's cup of tea stopped midway to his lips. You're telling me to leave? Teva knew this kind of treacherous territory quite well from extensive experience with his wife. It was prudent to answer a tricky question with another question. Haven't you made up your mind? Menachem took two or three sips before answering. As he collected his uncharacteristically scattered thoughts. Well, no. I'm tired of not measuring up. You mean, to the old baker, may Hashem guard his soul, Teva asked as he bit into one of Menachem's delicious pastries. You're better than he was. Menachem was flattered. Not everyone thinks so. People here are such Philistines. They know nothing about mouthfeel, texture, delicate flavors, the artistry and dedication it takes to create these daily masterpieces. It's just food, Teva thought but felt it diplomatic to keep the sentiment to himself. Listen, your bakery is one of the few businesses in town that are not struggling, he said, with a touch of jealousy. Are you willing to give that up? Menachem sighed again. It's just that people still see me as a replacement, a mere footnote. The unfairness of it is getting to me. Teva pondered Menachem's malaise for a while and had a sudden triumphant smirk. I know, I know just what we need to do. Menachem did not usually think much of Teva's ideas but for once he was all ears. We need to have a regional contest. The best bakers in the province would come here with their wares, and a panel of judges would decide whose bread and pastry is the best. 
I'm sure we would get support from the rabbi, and if you can put in a word with the modernists. Menachem was thunderstruck by the brilliant simplicity of the scheme. We can make it even more straightforward, he said. You know how people go on about my rugelach not being as good as the previous bakers? Well, mostly the seamstress and her clique, Teva pointed out. The seamstress, who was now married to the banker, had been the late baker's wife. Right, Menachem agreed. That's why the contest should be for the best rugelach. Amazingly, everyone in the shtetl was quite taken with the idea. It would bring in tourists, more custom to struggling businesses, and possibly put Cholensk on the culinary map of Belarus. Expectations rose. The modernist faction, to which Menachem belonged, decided to handle all aspects of the contest and even free up some funds to bring in bakers from out of town. The judge selection was a testament to the precarious political equilibrium in the shtetl. Father Smirnu would be the lead judge as a token of esteem for Christian neighbors. Rabbi Pinsker, who had gained of late a greater appreciation for the finer things in life, would sit beside him. Fyodor Hamashkiel, the head of the modernists, wanted in on the judging and insisted that the spinster Abramovitz join him. Mayor the Arendar, whose opinions were suitably opaque to everyone, would serve as a tiebreaker. Despite the organizing committee's best efforts, only six bakers, including Menachem, entered the contest. There were almost as many judges as there were contestants, but it was far too late to cancel. The townsfolk, in their disappointment, might choose to punish the organizers in unpredictable ways. To Menachem's surprise and delight, Golda, the Rav of Minsk's daughter, came to interview him on behalf of the Lovers of Zion Gazette she and the spinster Abramovitz had founded together. Not everyone agreed with the views expressed in the Gazette, but everyone read it. Golda whipped out a pen and notepad. Why is it a Rugelach contest? she asked. The query caught Menachem by surprise. Because Rugelach is to the Jews what croissants are to the French, a highlight of our culinary culture. He was pleased with his improvised answer, and apparently so was Golda. Truth be told, Menachem admired the Rav's daughter in every way that a man can admire a woman, and lent little credence to the rumors according to which she and the spinster were an item. He was quite excited to be in such close proximity with her. And if you had to summarize your philosophy as a baker, what would it be? She continued. His philosophy? What sort of question was that? His mind raced for something suitable. I see myself as a, he began hesitantly, as a, a bridge builder between the past and the future. My baking goods are traditional in appearance, 
They are meant to bring comfort and reassurance. But I like to innovate in my choice of ingredients. So when you are biting into my rugelach, you may say to yourself, well, this is the rugelach I've always known. But in reality, you are tasting a piece of modernity. It was a pack of lies since beyond cinnamon, there was no money for fancy spices like nutmeg, cardamom, or cloves. But the lies made for good sound bites, and Golda wrote it all down with gusto. And I'm assuming you can't tell us how exactly it is you innovate, she commented, because you wouldn't want to reveal your secrets to the competition. The interview had gone swimmingly. The day of the contest arrived. The entire stable had gathered in the square. There were smiles and intense curiosity on every face. Everyone rooted for Menachem, except perhaps for the seamstress, though she was a regular at the bakery. The judges were formally seated at three trestle tables made to look like one by an immaculate tablecloth provided by the Rebetzin. The contestants came forward with their freshly baked wares. Menachem had made his oven available to all as part of the rules. The first was also the oldest a doddering wizen man who barely made it up the three tiny steps that led to the president of the jury, Fyodor Hamashkil. The old man presented his tray of rugelach and nearly toppled forward as he bowed in deference. Fyodor inspected the man's offering and immediately offered it to Father Smirnu, who took one bite and winced as he felt his teeth nearly shattering. This, he said, this is sturdy pastry, like construction material, he said to himself. He passed the tray around and watched as other judges took more cautious nibbles. There were three other bakers, all in their forties and fifties from around the province and their rugelach was more to everyone's liking. The fourth entry, in particular, elicited nods of appreciation. Menachem was next, and his heart sank slightly as he noticed the interest in his competitor's production. He was greeted with smiles and encouragement, and the judges ate heartily of his pastry. Now this is rugelach! Rabbi Pinsker declared with a grin as he made quick work of his share. The Rebbitzin rushed to his side and slapped his hand before he could help himself to another. Absolutely delicious, the spinster agreed. Mayor the Arendal, who was not much of a talker, nodded once. Fyodor had read the piece in the Gazette and needed to say something grand and political. Your baking is a credit to Cholensk. It successfully blends tradition and modernity. A few people found it polite to applaud, but the noise was drowned in the general and somewhat aimless cheering. Father Smirnu kept his peace for he was too busy stuffing his face. Menachem felt victory near at hand. When the last baker stood up, she was a young woman in her late twenties who had taken over from her father when he had fallen ill. She was clearly overwhelmed, frightened even, as she approached the jury. There were very few female bakers in the land, or any land, and a stony silence came over the gathered townsfolk as she stood uncertainly before the judges. 
The spinster was the only one to wave her forward. Come, my dear, I'll be the one to take the first bite. Thank you. Ah, nice and fluffy. Perfect texture. And such, such heady perfume of apricots and raisins. The scent of cinnamon as well. Mm, mm, mm. This, this is simply extraordinary. Here, Fyodor, you must try it. The judges partook in turn, and the reaction was always the same. Charmed astonishment. And each time, with each taste, Menachem's face darkened a little until he could not contain himself any longer. Let me try it. Fyodor straightened in his presidential chair. Oh, that's against the rules, Menachem. The spinster smiled. Bah, let us not be so formal. She turned to the woman baker. Would you let him taste your rugelach? The woman blushed and said, I'd be honored and honored as well to try the gentleman's. Menachem burst upon the podium and threw himself at the tray, seizing the competing entry with a passion that startled audience and judges alike. Ah, so here it is, the object of admiration and sudden gluttony. He paused. Fluffy? Quite fluffy and light, indeed. How can this be? He sniffed the pastry. The spinster wasn't lying, he muttered loud enough for everyone to hear. It smells divine. No other word for it. And now for a taste. Mm. Oh, Lord in the heavens, you have given me at once the rapture of a miraculous rugelach and the torture of knowing that I am but an impostor. Menachem recognized that his new foe was the true innovator, that what he had said to the Gazette should have come from her lips. There was something magical to this rugelach. Beyond the perfectly stewed apricots, the touch of vanilla and the brown sugar, something otherworldly and new. What was it? His taste buds figured it out at last. A hint of orange zest to counterbalance the sweetness. He slumped, knowing he had lost. But was there not joy as well, standing in the presence of such overpowering talent? Don't bother tasting my rugelach, Menachem said at last to the woman baker. Yours is superior, and I concede. Mademoiselle, you are a modern genius. With this, he clapped, and soon everyone in Cholensk joined him in the applause. The woman won for best rugelach overall, and Menachem the modernist received the second prize for best traditional rugelach. The irony was not lost on him. <laughs>